is matter around us pure. You can classify matter into pure and impure substances. Impure substances are often mixtures containing more than one substance. You can again classify pure substances into elements and compounds. Elements, as you know, contain only one substance and can be grouped as metals, non-metals, metalloids and noble gases. The slide shows examples of each of these categories. When two or more elements react with each other in definite ratios, you get compounds. Water, cooking salt, ammonia are some examples of compounds. On the other hand, you get mixtures when two or more elements just exist together. Remember, there's no chemical reaction between these elements in a mixture. When the mixture is uniform, like when you dissolve salt in water, you call it as a homogeneous mixture. But when it is not uniform, you can easily separate the components of a mixture. For example, in a mixture of sand and stones, you can pick out the stones easily. Such mixtures are called heterogeneous mixtures. The slide gives you some more examples for homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Characteristics of a pure substance Pure substances are homogeneous. The converse is not true. All homogeneous substances are not pure substances. For example, a mixture of salt and water is homogeneous, but it is not a pure substance. There may be impurities in the salt or water. Pure substances generally have the same composition. For example, in water, hydrogen and oxygen are combined together in the ratio of 1 is to 8 by weight. Pure substances have some properties that do not change. For example, sodium carbonate always gives carbon dioxide when treated with dilute hydrochloric acid. This property never changes, so it's a pure substance. Elements Elements are pure substances containing only one kind of atom. There may be more than one atom in an element. When there's more than one atom, it's called a molecule. Elements having one atom only are called monoatomic, for example, Sodium and noble gases like neon and argon have only one atom. Some other elements like oxygen, nitrogen and chlorine have two atoms in their molecule and are called diatomic. When there are more than two atoms in an element molecule, it is called a polyatomic molecule. For example, ozone, where there are three oxygen atoms, or sulfur, where there are eight sulfur atoms. Types of elements, metals and non-metals. There are 112 known elements, though there are reports that scientists have discovered more. Metals are monoatomic and all metals are solids, except mercury. Mercury is a heavy, silvery liquid at room temperature. Non-metals are mono or polyatomic. Non-metals have elements existing in solid, liquid or gaseous state at room temperature. Metalloids are monoatomic elements. Metalloids like arsenic, antimony and germanium have properties of metals and non-metals. Metalloids are semiconductors and can pass current when some impurity is added to them. Compounds All samples of a compound are identical in composition. For example, ferrous sulphide contains seven parts of iron combined with four parts of sulphur. Properties of a compound are different from those of constituent elements. For example, Hydrogen and oxygen are gases. 
but water which is made up of these elements is a liquid. Unlike a mixture, you cannot easily separate the individual elements in a compound by physical processes. When a compound is formed, energy, generally heat energy, is absorbed or liberated. For example, when a carbon atom reacts with an oxygen molecule to form carbon dioxide, it liberates around 393.5 kilojoules of heat. Here are some typical compounds. A physical change. Dissolving sugar in water is a physical change because there is no new substance formed. This means that there is no chemical reaction between sugar and water. You get a homogeneous sugar solution. On heating, sugar solution undergoes evaporation to give sugar. In this reverse process also, there is no chemical reaction between sugar and water. Formation of a chemical compound A compound in its properties is entirely different from its constituent elements. Formation of a compound is a chemical change. For example, when you mix iron and sulfur without heating, a magnet still attracts the ion filings. This shows that iron and sulfur remain as separate entities and there is no chemical reaction between them. However, on heating, they undergo a chemical reaction and forms ferrous sulphide, on which the magnet has no effect. Differences between physical and chemical changes The table illustrates the differences between the physical and chemical changes. Here are common mixtures that we use daily. Difference between mixtures and compounds The differences between mixtures and compounds with reference to iron-sulfur mixture and compound of ferrous sulphide are tabulated here. Separation of a mixture of solids To separate solids, if their sizes are big enough, you can simply handpick the substances. However, if the substances have a small size, then we have to use different methods. To separate a mixture of iodine and sand, take the mixture in a closed container and heat it over a flame. At a certain temperature, iodine will start vaporizing directly without becoming a liquid. When you condense or cool the collected iodine vapors, you will get back iodine solid. Fractional distillation Fractional or stepwise distillation is used to separate a mixture of miscible liquids whose boiling points differ by 20 degrees Celsius. For example, when you boil a homogeneous mixture of alcohol and water, Alcohol will vaporize at 78 degrees Celsius. On collecting and cooling these vapors, you can get back the alcohol liquid. On further distillation, water vaporizes at 100 degrees Celsius. On cooling, the water vapors, pure water, can be collected. Fractional crystallization this method is used to separate two or more solutes, soluble in the same solvent, by making use of their differences in solubility. For example, potassium nitrate and sodium chloride are soluble in water. 
heat the mixture of potassium nitrate, sodium chloride and water and then cool to 30 degrees. Solubility of potassium nitrate at 30 degrees Celsius is 45 grams. So, 80 minus 45 is equal to 35 grams of potassium nitrate gets deposited as crystals. The solubility of sodium chloride at 30 degrees centigrade is 20 grams. So, all the sodium chloride remains in the solution. On repeating the process again, another 35 grams of potassium nitrate separates out. The process of heating the mother liquor and cooling is repeated thrice to separate the components.